Now, before we get started, let me clear this up for you. I am not here to defend Fallout 76. I'm not even here to defend Bethesda. They're a multi-billion dollar company after all, and I'm a frail stack of balloon animals with a beard. What I am here to do is talk about Bethesda, Fallout 76, the backlash, and the continued outpouring of scorn and negativity from the gaming public. I see videos pop up in my suggested box on an almost daily basis with titles like Bethesda's new low, why Bethesda is doomed, Todd Howard sent threatening emails to my social worker, or Bethesda kicked my dog. And honestly, it's getting a little tiring. Can't we talk about it without dealing exclusively in hyperbole? Because as we all know, if something in video game culture is bad, it's instantly the worst thing ever. With the companies behind the misstep, and we can all agree Fallout 76 is in many ways just that, being demonized and vilified until the next merry screw-up rears its head. It's a bit like being the casualty of the 24-hour news cycle, but a poor PR person gets called every rude name under the sun until Activision inevitably locks Team Deathmatch behind a paywall in Call of Duty and we all get mad at them instead. So let's talk about it, shall we? I've played a lot of Fallout 76 and I want to discuss it and the furor surrounding it without massive embellishment. In fact, if you bear with me through this attempt at level-headed analysis, I'll animate Todd Howard kicking a dog and put that at the end of the video. I'll even make sure the dog is from Bethesda, the actual place. Look, there are loads of them. Initially teased in May 2018 and first shown off properly at E3 2018 in that classic Bethesda, and it's coming out yesterday! Turn on your computers, idiots, it's already there! Style, initial hype for a new Fallout title, quickly made way for apprehension for some, as it became clear that offline single player would not be an option for the solitarily inclined. In the following weeks, there was a great deal of confusion about how this online vision would work, primarily how PvP and griefers would be handled, and despite a truly insightful and brilliantly put together documentary from no clip on the new game, Bethesda would release some rather vague statements on how it would actually work. But no matter, that's what beaters are for, right? Well, I mean, it did show us what was waiting come release day, and when that day came, we at least got what we expected. Fallout 76 has issues, and that's putting it mildly. Currently sitting at a 52 on Metacritic, the beleaguered title hasn't been shown a lot of love by reviewers, and that's fair. Long load times, always online, constant server issues, stuttering and freezing, slowdown, limited storage space, unintuitive base building, inventory items going missing, entire characters going missing, texture and object pop-in, unfixed known issues present since Fallout 4, an inability to mod these issues away on PC due to the nature of it being online, whatever happened here. And whatever this is. I think this is where I live now. They stripped out a lot of what made Fallout Fallout in order to retrofit multiplayer into an archaic game engine. There are no NPCs, no companions, just endless audio logs next to dead bodies and a handful of robot vendors that are limited to 200 caps a day. And this all plays into Bethesda's pitch of every human you encounter in Fallout 76 will be another player, which is a bit like saying all your goldfish are now cats if the cats then ignored you and just licked their behinds instead, except they didn't because they drowned in the fish tank. Bethesda drowned my cat! They want stories to be created from the interactions you have with other players, from the helpful wastelanders trading items to newbies to the player killers on a rampage to an entire server of vault dwellers arriving en masse to take down the Scorch Beast Queen. It's hugely ambitious, but it falls short in many ways. You can play it by yourself, we were reassured before launch, and you absolutely can, but it's clear that Bethesda had high hopes for people to run around in groups, as evidenced by the many perk cards and pre-release screenshots that reflect this. I personally have only seen a handful of groups in the entirety of my experience with the game. Outside of a 14-year-old begging me over Mike to kill him so his wanted level went away, which is just so nice, here's 99% of interactions I've had with other players. Good. 
So what we're left with, for all intents and purposes, is a largely solitary experience that's always online and at the mercy of server issues without a lot of the appeal of a, for want of a better term, proper Fallout release. And all of these issues have given birth to a subsect of the player base that use exploits and glitches to advance themselves. One such exploit, and this is ridiculous, allows for the duplication of items and necessitates that you craft so many objects that it crashes the server. It's just total anarchy, so why can't I stop playing it? I mean, I think about Fallout 76 all the time. I shelved Red Dead Redemption 2 because I'm insane, apparently, in favour of trudging through White Springs Golf Course, killing the same group of ghouls for XP and server hopping until they respawned. I frequently get disconnected, I'm actually writing this as the servers are down for maintenance, once got stuck in an endless loading screen that took 40 minutes and cursed it to high heaven each time, and I still came back, and I know I'm not alone. Oh Jesus, what the hell is that? There's an avid and passionate community of players on Reddit, I often spy players up to twice my level running around the place blinking high-level creatures out of existence, and a lot of videos critiquing the game come from individuals who profess 70 to 100 hour playtimes. So there must be something to it, right? There is. See, it's not all doom and gloom. Building my character up, working my way through what I will generously refer to as the main story, painstakingly constructing my own little slice of home to come back to at the end of a long day, smashing ghouls for my 50th wooden leg piece. It's a gameplay loop I've grown to really enjoy, from the low-level struggles with supplies and super mutants to becoming the king of wood scrap with a super mutant skull as a protective cup. It feels like I've been on a real journey through Appalachia to get to where I am today, perhaps even more of an achievement considering the overwhelming obstacles Bethesda placed in my path. Maybe it's just gaming comfort food, maybe not, but I tell you what, getting an alert that a nuke has been launched on your server and then watching it land on the horizon absolutely does not get old and is unlike anything I've seen in another game. A player did that. It's also got a load of colour! Yay! Greens and reds and greys and yellows! Fun! Another thing that's refreshing is that Bethesda really seem committed to growing Fallout 76 into something much greater. A lot like poor Sean and his No Man's Sky, the team clearly have a lot to prove, and the transparency with which they're communicating via blog posts is genuinely refreshing. Were their hands forced by the overwhelming backlash? Almost certainly, but they could go back to being silent again, and that is not a good look. Additionally, I find claims that Fallout 76 is a cash grab or lazy in any way to be disingenuous and unfair. The game probably shouldn't have been made without considerable investment in infrastructure to ensure it would run, but that doesn't mean hundreds of people didn't spend a few years making it. One final note on the matter, the idea of an online Fallout game might not appeal to everyone, and I totally get that. There was a lot of apprehension when Fallout 76 was announced, and before Bethesda dropped the ball in a lot of ways, but they didn't murder it. The Fallout franchise will still exist through Fallout 5 and beyond, and if you don't want this one, then fair enough. Skip it. It's okay not to play it. I very nearly didn't, but it sucked me in in a way I wasn't expecting. And in spite of all of its flaws, I'd still prefer this version of a multiplayer Fallout to the MMO alternative. I might get Todd to kick this dog. Here's me gleefully opening the collector's edition of Fallout 76 on camera, blissfully unaware of the demon lie bag that it came with. I was as surprised as anyone when it came out that, without telling any pre-ordering customers, Bethesda substituted the advertised and included strong, virtuous canvas bag with a cheap-feeling nylon one. Oh dear. Obviously, at the very least, this should have been communicated to purchasers before launch and not after, but oh well, thank goodness they didn't provide so-called influencers with the genuine article. Oh, they did? Oh dear. Well, thank goodness they absolutely didn't offer those who lodged totally understandable grievances a pittance of $5 in in-game currency to spend on a lamp or a rug. Oh, they did that too? Oh, come on, Bethesda. To be fair to them, they did then promise to send a proper bag out to all special edition owners that reached out. Still, though, 
that's a screw up right there. This all came in the wake of a day one patch that, on PS4 at least, was nearly 10 gigabytes larger than the actual game, weighing in at a staggering 54 gigabytes. That is completely insane, especially considering that studying the title afterwards revealed absolutely no improvements in stability or frame rates, both things the patch promised to fix. It should also be noted that subsequent patches appear to have made little impact on performance. Let's talk about the PC version, shall we? Bethesda's baffling choice to ditch Steam altogether and force players to use their own proprietary launcher did not go down well at all, and this was made just a tiny bit way, way worse when a bug with the beta for Fallout 76 caused the entire 50 gigabyte application to be deleted. This happened when the player clicked anywhere in the client, forcing Bethesda support to tweet out, we are aware of an issue with the client and are investigating. Do not click any buttons on the client for the time being. It's beyond parody, really. But wait, there's more. For a brief spell after the beta, players were unable to delete the application unless they purchased the full game. It was, of course, a bug and not an insidious marketing technique, but dear God, what awful timing. How about that personal information? I know I'm a big fan of keeping mine to myself in much the same way you probably want to keep yours to yourself. Unless you logged a support ticket with Bethesda, that is, as a glitch in their support system revealed the information of 65 customers who just wanted their canvas bag. Users were able to open and close tickets of other customers and view their names, addresses, emails, and partial credit card information, which is really, really bad. Bethesda did later clarify that the information was only what their support site would have requested, so no password or full credit card numbers were available, but still, oh no. Finally, a secret dev room was recently discovered in Fallout 76. Now, on the face of it, this may not sound too bad. After all, most games feature such rooms wherein character models, weapons, and other detritus exist for testing purposes. The difference here is that Fallout 76's dev room contains a human NPC. Now, before we all get up in arms, oh, it's already too late. This is likely because Bethesda needed a player analog to test weaponry and equipment on, but it's absolutely the last thing they'd once discovered given their decision to remove all human NPCs and the reaction to that decision. But that's not all, as the room also contains practically every item in the game, separate storage chests for those items, players are forced to only use one storage box normally, and numerous unreleased items that are due to be distributed in future updates. Oh dear, oh dear. And that is just where we currently stand. Some customers are still miffed the game they paid full price for at launch was massively reduced a week later. There's concern about the introduction of microtransactions beyond the, in my opinion, largely harmless atom shop that sells cosmetic items and the like. And there's still time for Todd to come around and kick every single one of the dogs in the entire world. These are all issues that absolutely should not have occurred in the first place, but when stacked on top of a lukewarm reception for a AAA budget release from a huge huge developer with a fantastic pedigree, the gaming community at large smelled blood, and they latched on good. Even those who haven't purchased or played Fallout 76 have enjoyed a joke or two at its expense, and you have to imagine that Bethesda is desperate to turn the tide of public opinion. But what do they do next? We're going to get to the dog-kicking animation shortly, don't you worry. So, how did this happen? Well, there are theories that Fallout 76 was intentionally made wonky by the development team in a ploy to force parent company Zenimax to grant Bethesda the funds they need to finally build a new engine. But, given that Todd told us last year that they'll be using their archaic engine for The Elder Scrolls 6 and Starfield, citing how easy it is to build games with, that theory seems unlikely. What seems more likely is that hubris and arrogance played a huge part in how Fallout 76, the idea, was turned into Fallout 76, the game. Because on paper, the notion of playing Fallout with friends is appealing to a lot of people, but not like this. It was in many ways not ready, with many claiming the game was rushed and unfinished. It's entirely possible that Bethesda thought it would be okay to release it in that state because, hell, they're Bethesda. They've released games with serious issues in the past, especially on PS3, and nobody's batted an eye. I suppose the core issue is that this isn't okay anymore. Hell, it wasn't okay several years ago, but Bethesda at least had the advantage of being a leader in their field of speciality. That is not the case anymore. They're very much not alone, and CD Projekt Red is just one example of another developer beating them at their own game. It's time to shape up. Financially, 
Bethesda are absolutely fine. Those who claim this will be their downfall in a financial sense are ill-informed, as there's a huge difference between Bethesda Softworks, the publisher, and Bethesda Game Studios, the developer. Bethesda Softworks, the publisher, has numerous studios underneath it and is doing just fine, thank you for asking. As for Bethesda Game Studios, let's not forget that Fallout 76 has defied the odds and sold rather well, so there are no money issues here. Bethesda could quite happily let this all blow over and learn nothing from the whole endeavour. However, public perception is a huge deal in the games industry and their reputation has taken an absolute battering over the last few months. Even with a strong community of players and good sales figures, Fallout 76 is perceived in the wider gaming community as something of a joke or a meme, and those people who've been wronged are upset. Bethesda knows this, and they have to begin rebuilding their public image. In a perfect world, they would continue their work to stabilize and support Fallout 76 with the aim of making it exactly as advertised or, you know, just work in general. They would scrap the creation engine and begin work on a new one immediately and take ownership of this series of mishaps. However, we are not likely to get all that. Parent companies, shareholders, the mammoth costs of developing a brand new engine, to put it mildly, I'd have to be very optimistic to assume fixing this would be as simple as following those steps. We may well find Fallout 76 is a much more complete product in six months' time, but if they've already begun work on Starfield and the next Elder Scrolls, it could be too late for a new engine to save the day, and the performance issues prevalent in Fallout 76, Fallout 4, Fallout 3, Skyrim, Oblivion, could well crop up again and again, and rival developers know that, with Fallout New Vegas devs Obsidian offering a not-so-subtle jab in their announcement trailer for The Outer Worlds, which in its own right is beating Bethesda to the Starfield-flavoured punch. Bethesda are too big for this to destroy them, but they're not too big for this to hurt them. Fallout 76, despite the loyal player base and the interesting ideas it attempts, is a thorn in Bethesda's side, and it's going to take some work to remove it. <laughs> Look at your hands and your shoulders. I'm Ben from Triple Jump. You can follow me here on Twitter and subscribe to the channel below. And thanks for watching.